Courtroom demeanor for correctional officers. Why is it so important for everyone that when we walk into a courtroom as a correctional officer, we look good and we have job knowledge? Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe. I want to talk to you today about courtroom demeanor for correctional officers, what I've seen and what we should do. I'm going to break it down into four categories. Personal appearance first, job knowledge, courtroom demeanor, and professionalism and civility. We as correctional officers don't get called into court as often as a street officer, but we are a part of the law enforcement branch and we can go to court on any given day and be subpoenaed to testify in a courtroom. You can be subpoenaed by not just the state attorney, but remember, you can be subpoenaed by the defense as well. I know that personal appearance is huge. At the end of my career, I worked for a judge as a bailiff. I personally saw two sergeants walk into our courtroom to testify. When they walked in, I looked at the other bailiff across the courtroom. He looked at me. We both had the same thing in our mind already. Their appearance. That's the first thing people look at, folks. No matter what you say, people will judge you by your appearance. Their uniforms were wrinkled. Their hair did not look good. It was not groomed well. And that was bad from the beginning to me, you know, and, and it's just not good to walk in that way. Personal appearance. I want you to look like my buddy here. This officer looks sharp. This officer's uniform is pressed. This officer's hair is within regulation. This is what I want to see when you come into a courtroom. And I know that the, the boot shining days are, are about gone because now we have tactical footwear that we use and it's not the type you shine, but come on. Clean that footwear, brush it off, and look good when you walk into the courtroom, okay? Personal appearance is number one because if you're testifying in front of a jury, they're sizing you up already as you walk up to take the stand and be sworn in. If you're just testifying in front of a judge, he or she is sizing you up already. Believe me, I know. I've talked to judges in the back when they've told me that officer just was terrible. That officer looked terrible. That officer didn't know what he or she was talking about. Folks, people talk now. You are in the limelight when you go to court and testify. So personal appearance is huge in getting you off to a great start in the courtroom. Take pride in yourself. Take pride in your uniform like my friend here. Take pride in your agency and represent your agency well when you walk into a courtroom. Okay? It benefits you, the agency, and everyone. All right, number two, job knowledge, okay? Why do you want to know your policies and procedures of your prison or your jail? Because you don't want the defense attorney to trick you or manipulate you, make you look bad in front of the jury and the judge and the courtroom, civilians sitting in the gallery. You represent the Department of Corrections. We want to show professionalism. We want to show we know our job. The same two that came into the courtroom, one of them was testifying, and the defense attorney actually had been a classification officer at one time in a prison. That's right. This is a true story, folks. Polk County, Florida, Polk County Courthouse. I'll go ahead and tell you tore that officer up. That officer had no knowledge of some of the policies and procedures they were asked about. That officer had no knowledge of the prison compound, the layout, when asked. And the defense attorney, who used to be a classification officer at a prison, knew, I'm going to get a layout of the prison, 
yes, I know there's security issues, but the attorneys can get um, an idea of what the prison looks like and the surroundings when, when there's a criminal case. Uh, and they can know the locations of the uh, incident. And tore this officer up. Tore this officer up. So, job knowledge, preparedness, be prepared. When you're, when you're subpoenaed to testify in court, get your report, please. Please get your report. Go to wherever you go and get a copy of your report. Read that report. Know what happened on that day. Please know the date when it happened. Now, listen, I know that incidents occur three years back and you're called into court. So what you do is you say, please give me a minute when asked, may I refer to my report? You can do that. When they ask a question, stop, listen, pause, then answer. If you don't know the answer and you want to refer to your report, then say, may I refer to my report? They have to let you refer to your report. And you say, yes, this happened on April 14th, such and such a date, blah, blah, blah. This is what happened. You can do that, folks. You can do that. You don't have to have every single thing about this incident up in your head because this happened three years ago, two years ago, one year ago. But be prepared. Bring your report with you. Don't count on them having it. That's another thing I want to tell you. Sometimes the state attorney will say, you don't need anything. I have everything. And then you get there. And the state attorney does not have everything. You're subpoenaed to testify about an incident you were involved in. You gather all the information and reports and take a copies, take copies with you. Have it with you. If they want to keep a copy or take your copy, say, please make a copy for me. Ask them to make a copy for you if there's discussion before or after your testimony. You, are, you always want to keep a copy for you, always. Um, and be professional and tactful, okay? Policy and procedure, know your layout of your uh, jail, of your prison. Let them know when you answer a question that you were prepared before you came in, that you have job knowledge. The more prepared you are and the better you answer the questions, short and sweet. Don't give long explanations, please. They want to know about a specific location and what happened short and sweet and to the point the longer you talk and tell the story the more they have to uh, try to manipulate you try to trick you change your story just the facts if you're older old like me you'll know just the facts okay like joe friday just the facts so with that said also stay cool stay calm Courtroom demeanor. When you sit down, sit straight. Don't slouch. Body language. The jury's watching you. The judge is watching you. Don't roll your eyes when you get mad or if you get upset at the attorney asking you questions. That doesn't make you look professional rolling your eyes. It makes you look like a 15-year-old teenager who's not happy with something. Uh, don't huff and puff. Make Make... Bad body language, no. You're a professional. You're in a uniform. You're an officer. No teenage huffing, puffing, and rolling of the eyes, okay? Don't do it. You'll look bad in front of the jury, and you'll look bad in front of the judge. You don't want to give them anything negative about you. Now, they're, they're instructed to follow the rules of the law, listen to the evidence only. We know that, folks. But any extra things that you do with body language or, or trying to be witty, come on, we're human. That sticks in people's minds when they go back to make a decision. They're trying to figure out if you're 100% honest and you know your job and they can use you or view you as a credible witness. Don't blow it. Okay? Don't blow it. Do it right. Be professional and with civility. Professionalism and civility. Being professional is knowing your job. Looking good in uniform. Being prepared for your courtroom testimony. Your courtroom demeanor, how you act in the courtroom. 
and being civil is acting professionally and answering professionally. All right? Cool and calm. Don't be witty. Don't be a smart aleck. Smart alecks don't go very far in their testimony in the courtroom. Nobody likes a smart aleck, okay? Good posture, eye contact. The attorney is in front of me now asking me a question. The jury is over here. Who am I talking to, really? I'm talking to the jury. The attorney asked me a question. I turned to the jury. No, on this particular day, I was uh, Unit 5-1, and I was the yard sergeant, and this is what I was doing at the time, blah, 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 right? Or if there's no jury, the attorney asked me a question, and the judge is to the left of me. He asked a question. I'll turn slightly to the left and answer the question, letting the judge know I'm answering the question to him or her, right? Be uh, aware of good communication skills. Be aware of eye contact and answering the people you need to answer. The attorney can hear you. He's asking those questions for either the jury or the judge or both at the same time to hear the answer, okay? So we're going to look at them. Um, I just wanted to throw a few things out here to try to get your mind going on courtroom testimony for correctional officers and how the minute you walk in, it starts with personal appearance, preparedness, you're ready, you know about the incident, you know where it happened, when it happened, and you know the policies and procedures surrounding it, courtroom demeanor, how you act on the stand, and professionalism and civility. Thank you very much, everybody. Good luck, and please be ready for your courtroom testimony. Gary York, True Prison Story.